Good evening all, welcome to Winging My Way Through YouTube. I am Will and today I'm going to be doing something I think will help. I don't know. Feel free to take my advice. Feel free not to take my advice. Your, your decision. I'm going to be doing a video on student housing. It's got to that stage in the first year's choice. The first year's university career, if you will, of deciding where they want to live, or who they want to live with in the second year, starting to organise that now, ready to find houses and sort a house out by June-ish time. So I thought I'd share my experiences, experience that sounded weird in my head, and hopefully help them, maybe, like I said, your choice to take this advice or not, you're an adult now, theoretically. Theoretically we're all adults now, and that's a scary thought, quite frankly, to me, but that's not why I'm here, hi! So where do you start looking for houses, where do, where do you start in general? I guess what you want to start with is find like-minded people. I'm not saying like your best friends, I'm not saying people in your class, I'm just saying find like-minded people who agree with what you think about housing should be and I've got Hamilton in my earphones and it's kind of just distracting me from talking. I'm gonna turn it down one second, bit of R. Kelly bump and grind. But my body, my body is telling me yeah, yes. Just like-minded people who, as I said, agree with what you think housing should be, whether it should be fun, whether people you should contribute, whether you should, you know, it's up to everyone else to look after themselves. My housing situation at this point in time was kind of up in the air and didn't know what was going on, so I want to help you. It started off in November, me and the flatmates, uh, we all got together and said oh, it would just be easier if um, we all live together next year, and I said, that's fine. I like you all, we get along. Um, so yeah, I have no problem with that. And I thought I was completely sorted. Got back after the Christmas holidays, and the girls turned to me and said, oh, so Will, where are you living next year? Excuse me? I thought I was living with you. Maybe they didn't remember it, and yeah, that's beside the point. So I was left in limbo. I didn't really know where I was going, who I was gonna live with. I, I ended up like uh, with a mishmash of people, who I kind of, Kind of, knew, I knew, and we all, we all seemed like a good laugh, and we all got along. Um, so we said, let's go together. It'll be fine, we'll get a house of five. Uh, beautiful, it's sorted. And then that fell apart as well, because money reasons, personal money reasons, couldn't afford a five bed house, because they're generally harder to come by, so people will pay more for them in high demand, and there's less of them for students, so they can bump the prices up more. And I just, I just couldn't afford that, so I had to leave, I had to find someone else to live with and that's how we ended up in this house i'm living with i know i said not your best friends not people in your class i mean <laughs> i am living now with three people from my class last year and it's absolutely perfect not perfect no house is perfect no house is perfect the people i live with now they were a group of six and i told my money concerns to one of the guys i live with now and he said um well we we're having trouble finding a, a, a place for six people, a nice place for six people. So, if it, if we split into two threes, I'll let you know, and you can live with live with us. I said thank you very much. If that's possible, then please. And two weeks later, they did break up, and I was invited into into this house, and I was so grateful. I'm still grateful uh, for this house, and this is my room. This is my room. I love it. I'm so happy with it. About to crack open my third energy drink because I've had no sleep. Oh yeah. Three for a pound from the co-op. We found a house that we wanted and we had to sort out guarantors and one person didn't know they needed a guarantor and couldn't sort one out in time. Um, despite us trying to sort out a resolution that we weren't able to sort them out a guarantor. So we had to find someone else and it was one of the girls from, one of the girls from the original big group of six that we said we'd like to live with you if you can get a guarantor sorted in the next two days then you can live with us and she had it done the rest of that that day so i'm just saying things don't go to plan you have to be prepared to swap and change because people's people's situation things can come out of the blue um so you have to be prepared you have to look after what you're doing you have to be selfish sometimes because this is your house this is this is going to be the place you're living and if one person is going to let you down you're going to have to sort it out quickly i wouldn't have this house if 
we didn't think on our feet. That's all I'm saying on that issue because it's not my place to discuss and that's all I'll say on the matter. I'm here to give you tips and that's my story about how I got to Avenue Road. How I got to Avenue Road. The William Prowse story. So where do you start looking for houses? Do you go to an estate agents? Do you go onto housing websites like like Zoopla or uh, Right Move Student? We tried all of those in our in my original group, and we found some places on Zoopla. Zoopla is a really really good place, but that you don't have any contact, any actual face to face until meeting at the front door of the building so you're not sure the relationship with the estate agents that who have put it up advertising it on the website personally i'm a big fan of face to face i like to get to get a name because <laughs> quite frankly if things go wrong you can blame someone else and you have their name i'm a shady bastard is what i am yes oh Dear Evan Hansen just came on in my earphones. I like face-to-face -face interaction because it gives you a relationship and the better relationship you have with the estate agent, possibly th the more they will try. However, the, I, the one we went with to get this place was not, was not good. I came into this new group after being invited, after the group of six split up and being invited into this house. I thought, I'm gonna sort out the house. I'm gonna put all my time and effort into sorting this. So I met with the estate agent by myself. Everyone, the other three either had work or had gone home. So I took it upon myself to look at the house, sort out the estate agent, and be the in-between person for it. I put down, personally, I put £500 of my own money into put, getting the deposit down on this house. But as soon as they took my deposit, they didn't contact us. And I think it was, this was at the end of May, and we were supposed to be moving in on the 1st of july and they didn't talk to us until the end of june so that was awful i put 500 pounds into their hands essentially and then lost all contact just by sending emails and phone calls and it got to the stage where i just asked to talk to the manager and the manager sent me to this to the another branch and this other person for the branch helped me so much helped our whole house so much and this bloody person who didn't contact us is gonna get the commission what's gonna get the commission for it and I said I'm not happy about that but thank you so much for your help because you've sorted it out for us can't, I can't think of the name of the company right now and I don't want to badmouth them but you have to watch out for real estate agents because they work on commission so that's what you have to bear in mind when you're dealing with them you have to be stern you have to be but not a dick don't be a dick be sure with what you are saying uh, before you say it because if they go no, that's not right then you go sorry I don't actually know anything about the housing market and they go well no, Obviously you don't because it's my job and then they treat you like crap for the rest of it So be sure of what you're saying when you're talking to an estate agent I recommend Zoopla if you want quick and you know, can I book this house? Can I book a viewing? Can I book a viewing? Can I book a viewing? Or if for human interaction you have to go to an estate agent. I don't know, where, where do you look for a house? Where, not where is in websites or estate agents, where location wise? Because as university students, you want to be near the university, but you also want a nightlife. And you're gonna want to be able to travel, so you might wanna be next to a tube station. We live near our old student accommodation in the flats, because we have the bus right there. We have free transport to get us to uni, get us into Ealing, but you might want to walk to university, which means you're gonna to wanna to find a house with 10 minute walking distance, but then that narrows it down of how many bedrooms you can find, how many bathrooms, how if you want a garden, da 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 da, da it narrows it down. So you may have to be open with your options to what you, what is essential. Will you be able to compromise? Compromise is a big thing with housemates. Um, when looking for a house. That's what you really, really need. Which leads me on nicely, segue. Who you should live with. The pros with living with friends is obviously you you know you get along. We're all musical theatre here, so for me, a pro is we can sing, we can be really loud, we can, we, and it won't get on our nerves. Another pro is we all have kind of the same timetable. We all know after working with each other for a year, we are responsible in our own manner. We get, we do what needs to be done when it needs to be done maybe with a slight, you know, 
jab to the rib. And it's generally me who gets the jabs because I'm really bad at washing up. Though there are some cons with living with friends. Um, just because you are best friends with people does, does not mean you're going to get along. Living with someone is very different to being their best friend. They're now your housemate. You will see them 24-7. That's a lot. That is a lot of seeing people. Trust me. One con of living with people from your course is there's four of us. We didn't know if three people were going to be in a group together and one person alone. Luckily, it happened that two in one and two in another. So we got we, we got lucky. But there is a house of my friends where they are all in a class together. So they see each other all the time at university and then go home and they're all together there as well. Personally, I don't know how they do it. I run out of conversation so, so quick. I could not do it. <laughs> so there are pros and cons, but I, it, personally, those are my pros and cons. I'm not saying... They're your pros and cons of whether you should live with friends or whether you should not live with friends. That's completely up to you. Like I said, these are just my tips, advice. You do you. You do you, I do me, you know. Now, a big one, as I may have mentioned, as I did mention before, the money situation. Second year is much more expensive than first year. You may not think it, but it is. I won't say digits, but uh, our rent is £50 more than it was in our student accommodation now. Is 50 pounds more expensive plus bills on top so we're paying X amount more than we were last year and you have to budget that you have to be honest with yourself to whether you can afford a place for example that five bed house um, five bed it was a house in a flat we looked at or something I had to be honest I said I can't afford this with bills on top I, I, I can't there's not there's no way I can do this I, I have to I can't live with five people uh, with in a house with five people. You have to be honest with yourself with money. Will you need to get a job in second year? Will you be able to handle a job alongside your course? These are things you have to think about before you make the commitment of moving in and putting down a deposit with people. Everyone's money situation is different. And just because someone has more money than you, do not be pressured into just saying yes to a house. As with anything, don't be pressured into anything. Peer pressure is a big no-no. And I think at university, you should be able to say no to stuff if you're not comfortable with it. Take that, society. Of course, if, if, of course, if the money situation is a big thing for you, you can always stay in Paragon. In fact, that's, that, that is what some of my friends did. There is one flat that has three of my friends in because they all organized it together. Um, so they could live together in a flat in Paragon. There's another couple, uh, two, two friends who were in my original group, my original house, the original plan, who said, okay, we can't, this group has fallen apart, so let's go in Paragon and make sure we get the same flat together. And that is working really well for them. They love it. That's an option for you. If you, if money is an issue, you can always go back to Paragon Student Let's. It's cheaper, and if you can get the same flat with your friends, then perfect. If not, you're literally a five minute walk away from your their flat to your flat. That's it. <laughs> it's a good situation. I would I would happily do that if I had the right people. Maybe I'll do that next year. Don't know. You get your free Wi-Fi, the bills are included, free bus. Apparently there's a Starbucks in there now as well, which I'm really, really jealous of that. And if you do decide to go for a house and not Paragon, you will have to deal with your landlords. We have really nice landlords. We have really super chill. If we need anything, we call or text them. For example, when we all went home for Christmas, we sent them a nice Christmas card with a letter saying, just to let you know, the house is going to be vacant. So if you're coming up to check, that'd be appreciated. If you can get next door to look after the house, just to let you know, we're not going to be here for two weeks. To which we received a nice phone call saying, oh yes, they're quite old. Oh yes, that was very nice. Thank you for the Christmas card. We didn't expect it. Um, oh, thank you for the letter as well. Letting us know you're not going to be in the house. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go and enjoy Christmas now. Peace! Drop my... So then some landlords are really stern. One of my friend's house after paying cash, which to me is a bit dodgy, but God forbid, knocking on my desk there, knocking on my desk, uh, touch wood, there is a burglary and someone breaks into the house, then that's going to be a lot of cash money sitting in your drawer ready for them to find, which you can't replace. So some landlords can be difficult and do have specific requests of you. So you have to deal with that or try and work around that or try and reason with them about what you need or want or what's right for you. 
and make a compromise with them as well. The effect second year has on some people can vary. Personally, me, I don't think I've changed that much. I still drink 39p energy drinks, but I get my head down, I do my work, and I relax as well. I relax a lot. I like my music. I like my games. I like to record videos like this, and my housemates respect it. But some people, there's one person in my class, their housemates aren't musical theatre. So they don't feel that like they can sing in their house, so they're actually going over to their girlfriends to practice for their course and do their work for their course. My friend's housemates have to focus on doing what they need to do, and this my friend is distracting them so he doesn't feel like he can sing. He doesn't feel like he can organize his practical work. So he has to go to university or go to his girlfriend's house to practice it, which, again, something you have to consider. <laughs> Excuse moi. But this house, this house, we're all really good. We all get our work done. We all are considerate of each other when it comes to noise. But being musical students, we are, we, we do understand when quiet time is and when we can be loud, unless we've had a drink, then the loud time increases to about half past one. Even though some people may be sober and trying to go to sleep, but we don't care because we're playing instruments at half one in the morning and having a sing song and finding harmonies. But you know, I don't know what housemate would ever do that, because you know, that's just inconsiderate, isn't it? <laughs> would do such a thing. And like I said, second year changes people, it might not change people. But that's something you have to consider. When you live with people, are they going to change? You just don't know until you live with them. You've got to think about that, people. But what is life like for me now, I hear you chant. What's life like? What's life like? I need to stop. This is my third. Life is pretty good. We got, I'll admit, and I'm sure my housemates will admit, we got to a really rocky start. We got off to a really rocky start the first semester. But after that, we have now, we've had the, we've had the talks about whether we want to live with each other and whether this, that, and the other. <coughs> and everyone has their own preferences again this year. Personally, I want to live close to university because this house is too far away. I want to be, like I said, in a 10 minute walk zone. But again, limits my choices of houses. One of the housemates wants to live with uh, their boyfriend, um, so they're trying to find a place together. And the other two, one has promised to live with someone else next year, so they're trying to organize that. I don't know what the other one wants to do. Literally no idea, if I'm honest, but life is good now. We have all learned our mistakes from the first semester. We have grown as housemates. I'm gonna be straight up. My first year, I wasn't really close to anyone. I had friends, but I didn't, have, I didn't have a group. So when I moved in with these three people, we, yeah, we were mates, we, we know we got along. But being housemates has made us grown closer, which is always, always a good thing, obviously. Especially because we do the same course, and next year we may have to work with each other in performances, and we know we have that chemistry to get it going and work with each other. Because we've all grown closer this year, I feel. I don't know how they feel. Screw the rest of them. They're nice people. I promise you, they're nice people. This has been housing. Life is good now. It's great. I really, really enjoy this house. And I do hope we live together next year. Because does it need a reason? I don't think it needs a reason. I would happily live with all three of them next year. That might not be the case, but... So second year housing is all about compromise when it comes to any stage in the housing process. You have to compromise when you when you find the perfect person to live with. You have to compromise about who else to bring into the group. Then you have to compromise about what house you want, whether you want a flat, whether you want a garden, whether you need a parking space, how many bathrooms you want, blah, 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 blah. And then you have to compromise about life in the house. Who does this? Who does what? Who does when? Who does how? You have to compromise with that as well. And once you get over all that compromise and you find the working solution, it is brilliant. Personally, I think it's not a proper university experience until you've had your own house because there's a slight bit more independence that comes with it and that's what university is about. Finding yourself, finding who you are and I think personally finding a house has a lot to do with that. You decide what kind of person you are, you get to see how other people are and it, 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 it's really, really I. I enjoy it. I enjoy having a house. I get to say, I'm going home and come to a house. <laughs> really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed this year. And I hope these tips help you and find a house. Hope 
you have taken something away from this from my stupid ramblings. My phone just gave me a notification saying I'm running out of memory, so I think this is probably a good time to round it off. So with manager energy drinking hand, I'm gonna say goodbye. God bless, and I'll see you when you're older. Thank you very much for watching. Later.